Hey everyone, so today's video by the title you can tell is going to be a thousand dollar face tag. Um, this was inspired by like all things nowadays when it comes to beauty by the Kardashians. Uh, I think an article came out, I want to say like a few years ago or maybe it was more recent, but like Kim Kardashian's full face takes like it's a it cost like twelve hundred dollars, and if you include like skincare and tools and stuff, it was like something even more ridiculous, like seventeen hundred dollars. And I was like, I actually don't even know how that like thought crossed my mind because I know this article is not that recent, but I think I was looking at a picture of her or like they were like dissecting a makeup look or something, and I was like, so that article kind of became like refreshed in my memory, and I was like, you know what? Even though I feel like when that came out, people were like shocked and amazed or like you know criticizing the fact that it could cost so much to look like that but I think that regardless of what you feel about that if you are into makeup if you make videos if you watch these kind of videos if you are a makeup enthusiast or a makeup collector um, I would say I'm a more of an enthusiast I definitely don't collect I don't buy makeup to like look at it or I like to use it so I would consider myself a makeup enthusiast but if you are in any of those categories, getting to like a thousand dollar face, if you were to say include everything, skincare, uh, makeup, and your brushes, and your tools, and your eyelash curl, and all that other stuff, it probably, you could probably hit a thousand, maybe, I don't know. Like again, not everyone, but people who are into this community or who are into this as a hobby or a passion. So, like I said, it was inspired by the Kardashians. Like whatever you say, however you feel about Kim Kardashian or Kylie Jenner, whatever you feel about them, you cannot deny the fact that they have a massive impact on how we do our makeup, how we wanna look, what products we use, etc., etc. You cannot deny the fact that they are trendsetters. Um, and the products I have chosen are literally like, this is the most expensive foundation I have. It's not done like price per ounce or price per gram. Simply, this is a foundation, I paid X amount of dollars for it. It is the most expensive product for this category in my collection. I don't know why I feel like a video like this requires a lot of like disclaiming. I mean, I'm not embarrassed by any of this. Obviously, everyone has stuff in their collection. I have been into makeup for like a decade at least, so you know you slowly just move your way into different, better, more expensive products, whatever you want to call it. And obviously, if you watch this channel, you know I never pay full price for anything. There's always gift cards, promotions, cash back, stacking, stacking, stacking. Now granted, all this makeup is high end to luxury, so it's not gonna, it's not like I, I was able to pay $10 for it, but um, let's just go. I'm gonna start with a primer. I have only, I want to say in the past couple years, gotten into primers because I felt like if you've watched videos previous to that, I just was like, oh, I don't see a big difference in primers. That's because I was probably younger. As you get older, you find that primers can be extremely helpful, whether it be to even out your skin, fill a little bit of, fill out your pores a little, um, correct the undertones of your skin, whatever it may be. This is probably the only product I'm going to share with you that I don't have that much experience with. I've only had it for about a week. Everything else I can give you full on reviews and if you have any questions about stuff, definitely you can ask them in the comments. But this is the Murad Invisibler Perfecting Shield and it has SPF 30 PA++. I have had this for about a week and I really like it. I always start off with like a nourishing primer, the Makeup Forever Nourishing Primer uh, as of late because it's winter and I apply that first and then I went and I apply this only kind of in the T-zone area and then I take a little bit more and I just like press it onto my skin. I love it. I think it looks beautiful because sometimes I find like silicone-y type feeling primers can almost, it creates a barrier but then I feel like you can see kind of dryness that wasn't necessarily there before. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just how I feel about silicone but this does have a silicone-y feel but it's not super thick feeling. And because it has SPF, they... Uh, encourage you to put it on your face, down your neck, into your boob area. So I can get back to you guys on this, but I so far very much like it after using it for a week. The price of this primer, I believe, is $65. I will definitely list every single item in the description box below and the price. Um, I don't know if I'm going to list how much I actually paid for it. If I remember what kind of promotion was going on when I bought it, I'll let you know. But I think it was like 25% off the Murad site when I picked this up. Next is foundation. I have never shared this with you guys before. It's the Giorgio Armani Crema Nuda. And this is what the packaging looks like. It's super luxe, really beautiful. I have mine in the shade Fair Glow. And this costs $200 at retail. I did not pay $200. But you get 50 milliliters. Uh, I would say the packaging is super beautiful. It's glass, it's very heavy, not travel friendly whatsoever. 
but you get a lot of product and it comes in like a form like a form i guess in a in a container like this i would say the maybe cleanliness factor is not really high in this product but open it up i just use like a q-tip or a spatula and i put some all over my face and i really like this i apply this with a beauty blender the first time i used this i wasn't super crazy about it but then the second time I used it, the more I used it, the more I liked it, and this builds beautifully. I have it on my skin today. I have about a layer and a half, I would say, so I did like one kind of pass, which is typically how much I do for any kind of foundation, and then I went over with a little bit more kind of around my nose area, around my mouth, and this looks beautiful. I would say it really looks extremely beautiful on the skin. It has skincare benefits. Obviously, I never use any foundation often enough to know or exhibit or experience any of the skincare benefits, but this is a really beautiful foundation. I do not think it's worth 200, but it is definitely a foundation that I love. The next item is a color corrector. I have tried a lot of color correctors. I typically use them a little bit under my eyes and around my mouth. And this is the YSL Touche Eclat Neutralizer, and this is in the shade Bisque or Apricot Bisque. This is a fairly new product on the market. It's just like their regular Touche Eclat pens. It's a clicky pen, and this one is, you know, kind of like a peachy, coppery color. I think this retails for around 38. The Touche Eclat pens retail for 42. I do believe there's the same amount of product in both though, so these are cheaper. I have tried a lot of color correctors. I'm a big fan of color correction. I like the Becca Backlight Targeted Eye Primer, that one, or Under Eye Brightener. That one is really good. The newer ones they've come out with that are like peach and green and orange. I tried the orange or the peachy one, not a fan, did not see a difference. The other ones that I really like are the Sephora Bright, I think it's the Bright Future ones, so those are really good too. Um, so this is what I have, it's kind of a brightener today. For under eye concealer, I have the La Mer Radiant Concealer. This also has SPF in it, an SPF of 25, and mine is in the shade Medium. This is what the product looks like. When I first hauled this, I said I didn't want to give you guys like a full-on review yet because I had not really kind of controlled the dryness of my skin during that period. But now that I kind of have it under control, we're still in the midst of winter here. And I love this. I have it on my under eyes today. It is so opaque and so creamy. There's a swatch of it. It blends so nice, but even when you're blending it, you don't lose the pigment. And I'm not someone that really enjoys a lot of contour or really likes to brighten her under eyes, but I have it today, so I don't know if you can see a difference in how my makeup looks, but it's definitely super bright under here, but not in a way that's obvious. I hate when I'm watching people or I see pictures on Instagram where it's like, obviously they wanted to brighten their eye, and it's like not kind of like blended into like the rest of their makeup. It just looks really bright there. Um, I love this. Do I think this is probably worth the 70 maybe like i really think this is really good the second place i guess for concealer is this by terry terribly Donceless concealer this retails at 69 whereas the la mer retailed at 70. and this i find that in general by terry their shade range runs fairly neutral i don't find that anything's really really yellow or really really pink um and this is i think in the shade four so it's called medium peach but if you look at something called medium peach though still looks pretty neutral i don't get like particularly warm feeling undertones when i look at this um and this because it's more neutral i find that you can use it under your eyes you can use it on your face you can kind of use it everywhere and the shade should kind of match pretty well if you're not going for that like super highlighted super bright super contoured look which is what i like so i would recommend this but i don't think you need to run out and buy it i think i like I guess it's kind of different because the La Mer is a cream and this is a liquid and you get kind of different things from different uh, product formulas or textures, but just wanted to throw that in there. So after you apply everything, you need to set it with a powder. This is the La Mer The Powder. I absolutely love this. Uh, this powder retails for 65 and you get 25 grams of product and it's housed in a massive container. I mean... Obviously the packaging is extremely superfluous, but it's a nice container and it's weighty. And you open it up and you have a puff. The puff is really nice. It feels super soft and velvety and cushiony. And then you just have your powder in there. 
I love this. I use this to set my entire face today and it looks stunning. It sets my makeup really well, it holds it in place, it's fairly undetectable. Um, I really love this powder. Coming at maybe second place for price is this YSL Souffle de Eclat powder. Mine is in shade 3 and I love this. The first time I used this, I was just like, oh, whatever, you know, I picked it up. I think I got it off of maybe Rulala or Gilt or something for like 40 bucks. And I was like, oh, okay. But then one day I actually really used it and really paid attention to it, especially on my under eyes. It made my under eyes look magnificent. Like I feel like this made my under eyes look better than my under eyes. You know what I'm saying? So if I had to choose between this and the La Mer, I would pick this one over the La Mer for the way it looks, but this one doesn't keep your skin as mattified or like keep your makeup in place as well as that one. They both do a really great job. I'm just saying they have different outstanding characteristics. Next up is bronzer. Bronzer and highlight are probably my two favorite kind of face products in terms of color cosmetics. This is the Sicily bronzer and this one, they only have one shade and it is $115. Yeah. I will say I had a $50 gift card as well as a discount to pick this up, but still, it's a lot. It's one of those gelée formulas, which I love. Anything that is kind of like a gelée formula, I'm super into it. I love this bronzer. I think it's stunning. If you've tried maybe say like the Makeup Forever bronzers, um, Estee Lauder for this summer has also come out with a gelée bronzer. Uh, I'm really excited to try that one out. But this is the bronzer I have on today. I think it's super, super beautiful. Uh, when you look at it in, in the pan, I find it could look a little orange, but I feel like on the skin, super, super gorgeous. I use it up in the forehead to kind of round out my cheekbones a little bit under here and I use it to kind of shape my nose a little bit. I love this. It's beautiful. Is it worth 115? Probably not. Coming in second place are the Tom Ford bronzers. These run for I think $80 a piece or $95 a piece. My favorite shade is Tara. This is what Tara looks like. And then there's another one that I picked up. It came in like their special packaging one summer and it's gold dust. So here is Tara and this one is gold dust. Gold dust is definitely more orangey and it has a little more like gold sparkle in it. So I obviously prefer this one, but both of these done together can look really, really beautiful as well. Next up is highlighter and I feel like overall in this video you're going to see a lot of the same brands, but this is also by Tom Ford. It's the Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in the shade Mood Light and this is what I have on as my highlight today. I use this all over in terms of like down the nose on the cheekbones which is super gorgeous i love highlighters that do have this effect i'm not one of those people that likes those where you can see it from a mile away i don't like that at all because i feel like it actually takes a lot of dimension away from my face and it requires me to do a lot more um, contouring and bronzing to make sure that the highlight's not too overwhelming so i have the white shade all over and then this shade which is like a really beautiful kind of peachy tone That's what that looks like. I have that shade kind of in between my bronzer and my highlight, kind of as like a blend to give it a little bit of extra dimension. Now that being a duo, I felt like I should include something that's a single and these are from Burberry and I picked these up pretty recently. This is in nude gold and I do think that these are limited edition and this one is in the shade white. This white one is so pretty. I usually am not someone that thinks I can wear white highlighters, but I've worn this many times and I think it's stunning. And these retail for $68. Next up is blush. I'm not super, super big into blush. If you watch like my videos, I'm not like a big blush buyer. I generally don't wear blush and I just depend on my bronzer to give me kind of a little bit more of color in my face. But this is a Tom Ford blush and this is in the shade Savage. This is my favorite one. I think I have another shade. Or, and I've also picked up others in the past. That is a fairly heavy swatch of Savage. It is stunning. It is kind of a bronzy rose uh, blush. And when you wear it, it illuminates. It's really stunning. It kind of has the same effect of Nars Taj Mahal, except Nars Taj Mahal is quite orange, but that is a whole different realm of, and it's matte. This one has a little bit of glow to it. Last but not least, for the sake of this video, I did a little bit of contouring. I generally don't contour that often, but this is the Kevin O'Quan Sculpting Powder. This is in the old packaging. I have another one in the newer packaging. 
This is what the powder looks like. It's a very, very cool toned contouring powder. What I usually do with contouring powders, a lot of people like to start off with contouring generally when they use creams. I am someone that just kind of layers the contour powder on top of my bronzer after I'm done because I think it looks a little more natural, less sculpted. So I just took a really, really fluffy like blending brush for like the eyes and I kind of drew it in right under my cheekbones and I did a little bit on my forehead, a little under here, a little around the nose, just a little bit everywhere. I don't think it makes a huge difference um, maybe on camera, but I think in person you can see that everything looks a little more sculpted than if I didn't use it. And this retails for 44 And this is in the old packaging, I believe you get way more product here, whereas when they came out with all the newer packaging that was less superfluous, they decreased the amount of product you got, but they ended up charging you the same amount of money. Next is eyes, and obviously you have to prime your eyes. I have the By Terry Ombre Black Star in the shade Bronze Moon. I love this. I have it on as my base today. It's a pretty standard bronze color, but I noticed that the way it applies, the shimmer is very sophisticated. It holds your shadow in place. You don't need to apply like a different primer before it. Sometimes I like to use like a regular eye primer, like a translucent colorless one, and then go over it with a colored crayon or shadow stick to ensure that if there's any colors I want to really pop that they do that but with this one I can just apply this one straight away and it lasts me all day. I think I've seen this retail for anywhere from $43.50 to $44 so that is an expensive crayon. I wanted to mention a few others that I really like and it's the Marc Jacobs Three Shakes and this one I believe retails for around $28. These are by Trish McAvoy and these retail for 26 each. Uh, I believe I got a really good deal on them off of either QVC or HSN. I got both of them for 19. It was a crazy, crazy good deal. And lastly is the Laura Mercier. I can't remember the exact price of these, but these are also in like the 24 to 28 dollar range. And the best time to pick up the Laura Mercier ones are around the holidays when she does kits of like five or six of these. And you can get a really good deal on like kind of like deluxe sizes and you can try out a lot of shades. Also, Laura Mercier tends to do fairly wearable colors. So you're not going to get like, like a neon green or anything within your kit. Eyeshadow palettes. The most expensive eyeshadow palette I have is probably the Tom Ford that came out over this summer holiday. This is called Pink Glow. It's stunning. I love every single color in it. The blushes I use as eyeshadows all the time. Really, really stunning. $95. Ouch. So since that was kind of like a face and eye palette, I wanted to mention other ones. And I thought I'd throw, I have so many Tom Ford quads. They run for, for 80 bucks a piece. I wanted to share the ones I have on my lids today. This, this is one of the newer quads. This one is called Honeymoon. And I have these two shades on right now. Those are swatches of the two shades I have on my eyes. I have the darker color on my lid and I have the lighter color on my lower lash line just so I wouldn't close up my eye too much. This is another quad. This one is called Coco Mirage and I have a, just these all over the lid as a crease shade and I have the lightest shade as my brow bone highlight. There is just something about Tom Ford's eyeshadows. They blend beautifully. My favorite eyeshadows I would say overall Tom Ford, Vizart, Burberry, and that's just how it is. Like I'm not saying like you can't find great eyeshadows at lower prices, but those are like really my one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas. Also in the $80 range, you have your Vizar palettes. And I love these. These are the matte palettes. One of them is the basic neutrals, and then this is the dark mattes. I get a lot of use out of both of these. They're wonderful. I love traveling with them because you literally need to take like one shimmery color and then you can just work with these and create the most beautiful looks. They blend beautifully. Some people might not like them because the packaging is whatever, but, and they're also kind of, you know, I mean, nothing really travels that well, but these I feel like, I always feel like something's gonna happen to them, but I've traveled with them a lot and nothing ever has. If you are looking to procure a Vizart palette, definitely check out Friends Beauty, sign up for their emails. You can get them for around 50, 55 bucks a piece, which is an excellent deal. And as for getting Tom Ford on sale, I really highly recommend you sign up maybe at Saks you, and like maybe get a credit card there and sign up. They send you emails fairly often and you can get 20% off. So that is the only advice I can give you guys maybe on how to get some Tom Ford makeup on discount. As far as eyeshadow singles go, again, goes to Tom Ford, at least for my collection. These are his cream color for eyes and they run, I think around 45 bucks. 
This is one of my favorites. It's called Autumn Winter 15. So it came out Autumn Winter of 2015 and it's just this really gorgeous Marsala-y color that you can apply in your crease or all over the lid. And my eyes are more of like a hazel shade, so it really brings it out and it looks super beautiful. I love these. I find that they last really long and they work well as an eyeshadow base as well. You don't need a separate base. You can apply powder on top of them and they, again, blend super beautiful, but you don't need to. You've probably seen these two in a more recent haul. This one is platinum and this one is burnished copper. These have come out, again, for this season and they again are also super super stunning next up is mascaras and to be completely honest whenever i buy a non-drugstore mascara i very very rarely repurchase it again so my most expensive mascaras are all drugstore mascaras so i figured i would just share these with you uh this is my bottom lash mascara it's the maybelline cat eyes colossal it is I don't know the pricing of if even if you bought all these I think are still under 20 bucks and then for the top lashes I love the Maybelline lash sensational as well as the cover girl super sizer mascara all of these are of course for me are in waterproof formulas um, these are just like my I just there's nothing expensive I can share here with you when it comes to drugstore makeup I say buy your eyeliners buy your lip liners buy your mascaras buy them at the drugstore. There's no no need to go high-end for those items. The most expensive pencil liners I have in my collection, one is by Dolce & Gabbana, and I think this retails for 31. This is a close-up of the Dolce & Gabbana. This is in shade number two, and it's a brown color, and that's a swatch of that. The second most expensive one in my collection is probably by Kevin O'Croix, and this is the Eye Pencil Primatif, or Primatif in basic black. And that's a swatch of that there. I don't think I've actually purchased either of these. They both come for free. Um, I think this one I got in like a Sephora gift thing and then this was maybe like a promotion. So I didn't pay for any of these. And I still, I mean, they're okay. I would never say that they're like in my top five favorite eyeliners. So there's not much to say there. Again, this is something L'Oreal makes really, really great pencil liners. So. Uh, L'Oreal and Milani just get your eyeliners from the drugstore. But in terms of non-drugstore pencil liners, two that I really like, one is by Ardency In, the Monster Liners, and then the other one is the Tarina Tarantino Hyper Liner. Both of these are in the black shade, and these are just amazing. So if you ever see these on Outlook or something, grab these. These are fantastic. Liquid Liner. I would consider myself a liquid liner aficionado. I would. Uh, I would say... I am not a big fan of felt tip liners. I'm a brush tip girl all the way. I think they're just more fluid in every sense of the word. You get more liquid payoff and they also glide better along the eye. Kat Von D makes great ones. I like the Lorac one, but it, it kind of wears out quickly. At the drugstore, Physician's Formula and the Jessie's Girl one, grab those, they're amazing. But the most expensive liquid liner I have in my collection is probably by Charlotte Tilbury and it's called the Feline Flick. I tried using this today, it was already dried out. Like, I don't like felt tip liners for the simple reason that I think that it absorbs all the powder that's already on your eye and there's no way to kind of cleanse that or clean that out. Whereas with brush tip liners, whenever I just kind of roll it along like a tissue, any kind of like thing that's built up in there, any product can you can just be wiped away and it's like the brush is brand new again. Liquid liners that are liquid liners that are felt tip that I would highly, highly recommend to you are the Laura Geller ones. You get them in a, a kit of three and you get a black, a blue, and a green and they're stunning. Those are swatches. I mean how they're like pigmented. They go on beautifully. You can go thick or thin with the line. These are amazing. You get three. They're 30 bucks for the whole set. Super, super great deal. The one from the drugstore that like never runs out is the Jordana Fabi Liner. I think it's like three bucks. Definitely. Like it's crazy. I think I started off in makeup trying to use the Charlotte Tilbury one for you guys today. Mm -mm, I just finished it off with this. This lasts forever. In terms of felt tip liners, I can't think of a felt tip liner that has last longer than this one. Next up we have lashes. I am not someone that buys a lot of lashes. I buy them drugstore level. I love Kiss lashes, Sonia Kashuk lashes. Uh, so as far as expensive lashes go, I don't have like a crazy amount of experience to share with you, but these ones that I have on right now are by Huda Beauty. They're like these really fun packaging ones. This is the style I have on my eyes. I had to maybe cut them a little bit but they look beautiful. Like, do we not think that those lashes are like super crazy gorgeous? 
What I can say and share with you about her lashes are that the band on them are quite thick and they're black and they hold up. I feel like I can probably wear these lashes like 30 times. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe it depends on. I think lashes can last a really long time if you take care of them. Like if you don't just rip them off, I really find that if you actually take the time and put like, you know, one of those biphase eye makeup removers on a cotton pad over your eye and hold it there and just remove it really, really gently, they will last a really long time. You will get dozens of uses out of them. My most expensive lash glue is just my only lash glue. It is the Kiss Jet Black. It's $2.99, I get it off of bijour.com. I have the clear and I have the black. These are kind of hard to find. I see them on Amazon sometimes, but I like these because it is a silicone tip in a little bottle. So it's unlikely, unless you're super messy, you're never gonna get that build up around the, at the, around the top where you can't be able to screw it in again. Can't be able to, is that even proper grammar? I don't know. Love this, $2.99, it's just, you know, I really love the Makeup Forever glue that comes with their lashes, but I don't think that's sold like uh, as individual lash glue containers. So for the brows, this is the Eye and Brow Maestro from Giorgio Armani. And this is in the shade Ash Blonde. This runs 35 bucks and to me, this is a necessity to me. Like I can't do my brows without this, without this ever since I started using it. I use it on, I take an angled brush and I kind of go through and I fill in the brows because I cannot just go in with a pencil. It just, it, I can, it's just not my favorite. I love this, it keeps everything in place. In my experience in doing my brows, I only feel like in the last year or so, not maybe not even the last year, maybe in the last month or so, have I really been feeling more confident about how they look. And this makes a big difference for me. So I, 100% think this is worth 35 bucks. After I fill it in with that, then I go in and I kind of further, I create more of a shape with the Anastasia Brow Wiz pencils. I have Ebony and Caramel here. I like going through with Ebony to kind of shape the brow and then go in with Caramel because I have all these red tones in the hair just to make it less black. I know that $21 for a brow product sounds crazy also, but these are so worth it. I know that tons and tons of brands have started coming out with their own brow products and I look forward to trying them. I, I, I really love the NYX one. The L'Oreal one, I didn't like as much. Uh, I'm trying to think off the top of my head whichever ones I've tried. I've also tried a lot of Asian brands, Japanese and Korean ones that I also really like. And the same goes for liquid eyeliners. I find like you will find really, really great eyeliners for say under $15 in like the Asian market. Last but not least, we need to talk about lip products. I have never worn this lip combination before, but now I am so obsessed with it because I was like, okay, let me go pick out my most expensive lip liner, lipstick, lip gloss, and lip balm, right? This is stunning. Like I, I really think that this lip combination is outstanding. I started off with the By Terry Definition Waterproof Lip Liner in Perfect Nude. There's a swatch of Perfect Nude uh, for me, it is a perfect nude because I love kind of more orangey peachy based lip colors. I started off with this and I lined like my entire mouth. Then I went in with my Tom Ford lip color in Sable Smoke. This is my one and only Tom Ford lipstick. I love this. I had been eyeing this ever since it came out. Um, I love this color. So after the liner, I went in with this all over the lips as well. I love this lipstick. Is it worth $52? Maybe not. Will I probably get another Tom Ford lipstick? Not anytime soon, but I really do love the one that I have. Next is lip gloss, and lip gloss is one of those items that I think is definitely something you can just kind of stick to the drugstore. Uh, there are really stunning colors and very interesting formulas that you can find uh, at the higher prices. Uh, this one is by Dior, and it's the Dior Addict Fluid Stick. This is number 219 in Whisper Beige. This is like, one of their standard colors, like it's not, you know, limited edition. They do limited edition shades uh, for this, but there's a swatch of that. It's so pretty. This is one of those lip glosses that I would never just apply and then leave. I always apply it and I tap it in and it looks so beautiful. You just kind of run it through your lips with your finger and pat it and kind of give it that less glossy look because I think that based on like, the size and shape of my lips. I don't like it when things are super, super crazy reflective. I need them to be slightly more subdued. So 
I love this and as you can see like the way the colors go it just creates a very beautiful lip this retails for 35 there were some kind of close calls like there was like a the a YSL and I actually thought the Charlotte Tilbury's were really expensive too but I think they're under 30 lastly I want to talk about a skin mist this one is by Tatcha you have seen this in a lot of videos it runs for $45 something like that I really like it I think it's kind of worth the price especially how about this it's worth the price if you have dry skin if you just have normal skin or your skin is oily you won't care for this but if you have dry skin or if you want to find something that's really great for the winter months this is excellent you can start off with this as a primer or as another layer of moisture and at the end you can spray maybe just like the areas of your face that you want to look more glowy or you can just use it overall sometimes i will apply this as a primer and then immediately throw some foundation on it with my beauty blender and it looks so pretty or apply your foundation and then spritz this on to take away like some cakiness that might occur because of dryness so i super love this so that is the end of this video i hope you enjoyed it obviously there was the option to do like the least expensive items in my collection for any given category but i just felt like i would end up it would be like full of elf i think or maybe wet and wild and i just didn't want it to be like like that and i know even here there's like a lot of tom ford but i just generally i enjoy his products and i like a lot of them and the quality and quantity i guess is delivered so i encourage you to tag whoever you want to see do this video obviously i'm gonna tag andrew andrew you know if you want to do it please do it or if you want to do it you know let me know you know tag me on instagram or send me a link or something i would love to see your most expensive item in any given category as well I had so much fun doing this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you guys really soon.